inferential question because you're asking for the contextual meaning of it heartily, all right, and you need to infer because of the word suggest, infer about the amount of food that each person was served. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to do. It, basically, you need to infer the amount of food served based on the contextual meaning of it heartily. So the answer is actually in yellow, all right? Okay, the amount of food uh, served to each person was large, or there are many very vocab here, plenty of food, a lot of food, great amount of food, enormous, huge. All right, can you please copy the very vocab, the one in yellow? All right, so these are the possible answers uh, in terms of the amount of food that uh, each person was served. Okay. All right, so very substantial, abundant, a spread of food. Okay, all these are okay. Very, extremely large, huge, generous, generous, sorry, more than enough food. Plentiful, okay. So as you are copying, right, I'm also going to let you know, like, what are some of the answers that we didn't accept, which is the one in red, okay. Notice that the question is asking for the amount of food that each person was served. Can you see, I bold the word "served" in the question. So if you were to write, everyone ate a lot of food. Can you see, the words underlined. Eight is not served. So there's a distortion of meaning. So we didn't give the mark. Okay, basically it's wrong. If you say the word eight, even though you say a lot of is correct, but because you use the word eight instead of serve, the meaning is distorted. We did not give the mark. All right. So because question asks for amount of food served, not the amount of food that is eaten. So being served a lot of food doesn't necessarily mean that everyone ate a lot of food. All right, because the served food may still be on the table and it may not be eaten. So basically distortion of meaning, we didn't give the mark. If you write the word eight, okay? So do take note of that. This is a very popular wrong answer, okay? And of course, these are the wrong adjectives, all right, the one I'm highlighting now, okay? So if you say just enough, enough, adequate, sufficient, all these things, right? Okay, all these are wrong because they basically convey a lesser than large portion, okay? It is not, basically, it is not large enough. Okay, so that's why it's not uh, uh, accepted. Okay, they don't precisely convey the meaning of a large portion or eight heartily. Okay, so I'm going to give you some time to copy the one in yellow. When you are done, okay, you can type three in the chat box. Done with copying the yellow part. Just the key adjectives, I'm going to copy every single word. Okay, just the key adjectives. Just type three when you're done on the chat box. At 9.19, I will move on to the next page. Huh? One more minute for you to copy the very vocab. Basically, it's to expand your vocab, that's all. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to move on. Huh? Okay, I think most of you are done. Let's move on. 
Okay, now we're going to move on to question number six. Okay, this is a very easy question. Most of you got this correct. Identify a phrase of not more than three words, okay, to show that Lord Glenavon was generous in his sharing of their location. So notice I highlighted these words. Can you also highlight? All right, these are the keywords in the question. Generous in his sharing. All right, that is lavish, comprehensive. Then after that, the word locate of their location is actually information. So basically, the important thing for code question is you will need to, your code needs to actually correspond to the key contextual clue in the question itself. All right, your code needs to correspond to the key contextual clue in the question itself, which is the one that's highlighted. Okay, every single word. So obviously, lavish, lavish means uh, give a lot of information. All right, that is being generous in sharing. And then the location is information. Okay, so that's how you get the answer with the single quotation mark, of course. All right, anyway, most of you got this answer. Okay, so I don't want to take too long for this. Let's move on to question seven. All right, can you highlight in two colors? Hasten one color, throng another color. Okay, so the thing is, this is a vocab in context question. Okay. This is the vocab in context question. So we are looking at the contextual meaning of hasten plus the contextual meaning of throng. Okay, so one mark each. Hasten one mark, throng one mark. All right, so your meaning of hasten must correspond to the idea of actions of inhabitants. So, of course, a throng also the same thing. It must be related to the idea of actions. Okay, so let's look at the answers. Yellow is for hasten. Please copy the very vocab. Uh. Okay, the keywords only. So when you talk about somebody hastening, okay, the hastening, hasten meaning means you're hurrying or you're moving rapidly or quickly or you're rushing, scurrying at a fast pace, okay, or moving swiftly, okay, or you scramble or hurriedly rush, all right, rapidly, for example, or very urgently. So all these are acceptable. So all these reflect the contextual meaning of hasten. Okay, all this reflect the contextual meaning of hasten. And hasten, we are only looking at the speed of movement. Okay, we are only looking at the speed of movement. All right, and then the next part is the word, uh, idea of throng. Throng means crowded, gathered, congregated, swarm, flock, flooded, or filled. Okay, so it, the contextual meaning needs to reflect a great number of people, okay, doing the action of crowding the bridge. Okay. So haste, you need, they are hastening to a, the bridge. All right, that means they're moving very quickly to the bridge. And then after that, they are thronging the bridge, which means they're crowding around the bridge. Okay, so there are two actions uh, that the inhabitants uh, took. Okay, they reflect the meaning of hasten and throng. All right, so one of the, the popular wrong answers is hasten. Okay, in this case, it should not reflect the manner of movement. All right, so for example, you shouldn't be talking about anxiously, eagerly, frantically, hastily. All right, all these are what I call manner of movement. Okay, so all this is wrong. It should have the idea of quickly, speed, swiftly, rapidly. They're talking about speed. They're not talking about how they move. All right, so basically we are looking, we are not looking at all this and hastily is wrong because it is taken straight from the questions keywords, which is hasten. Okay, hasten and hastily, they all came for the word hasty. So we cannot give them up. All right. There are some more popular wrong answers uh, on the next page. Okay. So I'll let you all copy first. Then I will move on. Okay. I give you the 924. If you're done copying, can you type 4 on the chat box? The, both the yellow and the blue one.
Okay, let's see how many people are done. Okay, I think most of you are done. We're going to move on. Huh? All right, let's move on now. Okay, so I want to let you see the popular wrong answers. Okay, so basically these are the popular wrong answers. Okay, uh, were quick in their actions, were very fast and very quick to act. So all these are too big. All right, because we do not know what is the exact action. Okay, so this is actually wrong. All right. Okay, so you, the answer should be very quick in their movement towards the railway bridge. Too, in other words, they are underlined. All right, there must be, uh, you know, talking about the speed of movement. Okay, so you cannot just say very quick in their actions. What actions are you talking about? Is it the actions of your hand, your head? You know, so it must be very specific. All right. And then after that, these are wrong. Anxiously is wrong because uh, it's talking about manner of movement. Quick is correct. But one correct and one wrong is wrong. All right. So same here, quickly is correct, but the underlying words are wrong. So therefore, it is wrong. All right, underlying words do not reflect the meaning of hasten. All right, and also the black one, I'm going to uh, highlight now. This is also important because there's a contextually logical order in the inhabitants' action. They have to hasten towards the railway bridge first. That means they must rush to the railway bridge first before they crowd around the railway bridge. That's a logical order, all right, contextually logical order, all right? So the word throng cannot refer to the speed of movement, logically and contextually. Okay, so therefore, throng can only refer to what they did at the bridge, which is crowding the bridge. Okay, hasten is rushing towards the bridge. Next one, these are all the popular wrong answer. Okay, I just go through a few. Huh? The first one, which I highlighted, is important because the answer is uh, that some of you gave is you're extremely curious to see what happened. But this is wrong because this is actually inferred for throng, all right? It means, why did they throng the bridge? This is the answer for why they throng the bridge. This is not the contextual meaning of throng, which is what is required, because this is a vocab in context question, all right? Okay, so what this emphasizes is the importance of identifying the question type before answering the question, because it will really skew the way you answer the question, according to the technique which also governs the type of answer that you will produce. So this is why this is so important to know the type of question. So if you know it's vocab in context question, you just give the contextual meaning of the two words. Finish. Don't need to tell me to infer anything from it. All right. Okay. So the, I'm not going to go through all the rest. Huh? Okay. This is a popular answer. See the one I highlighted? Surrounded the bridge. All right. This doesn't have the idea of crowding with a lot of people. When you say surrounded the bridge, it means they are around the bridge, but that doesn't mean there are a lot of people crowding the bridge. It doesn't have the idea of number, a lot of people, so it is wrong. Okay, the rest is uh, given, uh, not very popular wrong answers. They are just put there because one person wrote it. All right, okay, let's move on. Next, something serious that happened, why it occurred. So this one is an easy question. The answer is just have fallen off the railway bridge or you fell off the railway bridge. All right, some of the popular wrong answers include this. Please take note. Huh? Right, it sounds correct, but it's actually wrong. Why? Because derailed means that the train accidentally left the railway track. But that doesn't mean it fell off the railway bridge. All right? So it doesn't have the idea of falling off the railway bridge. So derailed is actually wrong. All right? In this context. Then the other popular wrong answer is this. Okay? You just say that the train fell off the bridge. But what bridge is it? It is not specific enough. It needs to state railway bridge. The exact type of bridge because there are a lot of type of bridges. So basically, complete answers need to be very precise and specific. That is the learning point. <clears throat> okay, let's move on. Huh? Okay. Next one. Okay, now this is not an easy question. Number nine. I, I think half the class got it wrong. Okay, so they are asking you what is the effect of using a word which is tragedy followed by a sentence which is not only was the river crossed by the red railway full of broken carriages, but it was filled with innumerable charred bodies. So language achieve impact question, we look at the answer first. All right, the explanation and the wrong answers will be in the next page. So we just focus on copying the correct answer now first. All right, okay. The ones that are highlighted, they are the correct, all the possible correct answers, okay? So it intensifies or it emphasizes or it highlights the calamity 
or the disaster or the catastrophic nature of the accident or the devastation of the accident, all right? The severity or seriousness of the destruction, damage, okay, and also the wreckage at the scene. So if you realize, right, what is important is an effect question or effective question has to have the idea of emphasize or highlight. That's number one. Number two, okay, we focus, when you look at this type of question, right, we, use, we always focus on the effect created by the second sentence. This is the climatic second sentence, the one that I'm highlighting now. This is the climatic second sentence. So we always focus on the effect generated by the second sentence. So what is the second sentence about? It is about the description of the tragedy. In what way was it a tragedy? You have full or broken carriages and filled with innumerable charred bodies. So this is why it is a tragedy. So it's describing, elaborating, or emphasizing the calamity, which is a very vocab of tragedy. So if you look very carefully, right, calamity, disaster, catastrophic nature, all these words are actually referring to calamity, the very vocab of calam calamity or tragedy, sorry. All right. So my the answer in blue is all highlighting, all right, the tragedy. Okay, which is described in the second sentence. So that's the effect that's created in the second sentence itself. All right. So you have a use of the more descriptive sentence immediately after the word tragedy to paint a more vivid picture of that catastrophe itself. Okay, so focus on the very vocab of tragedy such that it emphasizes, all right, the devastation of the accident. Okay, later when I move to the next page, you will see you know, some of the the, the reasons how this answer is derived and uh, what are the wrong answers, popular wrong answers, and why they are wrong. All right, so you copy this first. I'm going to move on. Okay, when you are done, can you type five? Then I will move on in the chat box. Okay, still got half the class haven't type five. Huh? I'll give you another one more minute. Okay, you just need to copy the keywords huh? uh, for the question. They help you understand the question, that's all. All right, are you doing 934 before I move on? One more minute. Okay, keep your fives coming once you're done and I'm going to move on soon. Okay, let's move on. Huh? I think most of you are done. All right. We are going to look at uh, still the same question, all right, but the explanation which is here, all right, and then the wrong, popular wrong answers which is the DNA. All right, sorry. Okay, so as I said before, answers to such effective questions requires us to think about what is the author's purpose or intention of using a short word followed by a long sentence. So bear in mind that the, the effect, all right, the focus is on the impact or the effect created by that climatic longer second sentence. 
which contains a more detailed description of the tragedy. All right. Essentially, what this means is it's meant to intensify the catastrophic nature of the disaster. All right. The elaboration, the greater details added, all right, is meant to emphasize on the catastrophic nature of the disaster of the All right, so that is uh, the explanation itself. Now, next one, okay, we are looking at the DNA. Why are these, why is this answers wrong? Okay, obviously you cannot say the effect created is bad or too negative uh, because it's fake, all right? Then of course, you cannot say extent of the damage, okay, it creates the, the talking about extent of damage. So what is the extent of damage? All right, you need to tell me the severity of the damage, or it's too vague. And then you should not be using how plus adjective. I think I went through before. All right. If you use how plus adjective, you do not convey the precise degree of the adjective. So basically the question is, was the incident severe or not severe? If you look at this. All right. So I do not know. The marker will not know whether the accident was severe or not or very severe. Okay. For example, if you put, okay, how severe the incident was. So never use how plus adjective. Just give me the degree. Is it severe or very severe, for example? All right. Okay. Then after that, next one we are looking at is actually the, the another very popular answer. Okay. Is actually the shocking the reader. All right. This one, uh, okay. There is actually no shock at all. The one that gave the shock answer is actually the uh, one with a super long sentence followed by the short one. If you actually remember the hiker in the old level, they are talking about the drop was 30 meters. So there was this idea of danger in the second sentence. So the effect created was emphasizing the danger of the situation that was in the old level, the hiker one. All right. So this one, that one is shocked the reader because there's danger associated with it. But in this case, there's nothing about the danger itself. You look very carefully, right? Okay. So why is it wrong? Please look at the one that I highlighted. Okay, because the shock is more likely to come from the first word tragedy rather than from the second word. Okay, why does it come more likely to come from the word tragedy? Because it comes out of nowhere to start the paragraph and it's also accompanied by an exclamation mark. So that's where the shock comes in. But in this question, we are always asking about the effect created by the second sentence, all right, which is the climax. So basically, right, in this case, there shouldn't be any focus on any feelings associated with the accident because the impact created by the second sentence is actually to emphasize the devastation, which is the tragedy, through the more detailed description of the tragedy in the words, which is full of broken carriages and innumerable charred bodies. All right, so I think it's important you know why certain answers are wrong, okay, and why the correct answer is correct. The reasoning behind it, all right? Okay, let's move on now. Paragraph six. Okay, this one is very easy. All right, as I can you highlight in two colors, mass of ruins. Okay, accordingly, the answer is heap of destruction with the single quotation mark. All right, so notice that the code, once again, we want to emphasize that the code, all right, every single word of the code must actually address every single word in the key contextual clue. So, as I said before, in any code question, any words in the question that is inside single quotation mark, like the one I'm highlighting now. They are important words you must focus your eyes on. That means your answer must address all three words, especially the content words, mess and ruins. It must address all the keywords in the quote, in the question. So mess is actually heap, ruins is destruction. That's how you get the answer. All right. Okay, let's move on. Huh? This one is not a difficult question. Number 11 is more difficult. Can you highlight in two colors? One word is much. The other word is contemplation. Okay, now, so basically, right, you can see the color coding. Uh, it's not because it's very fun to go yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, uh, but it is to emphasize, is to show that Barry is addressing much, thought deeply, is addressing contemplation. Okay, you can start copying now and highlighting. Okay, now, so this question is a vocab in context question. So basically, I'm asking you, what is the meaning of much contemplation in the context of the way Lord Glenavon thought about the accident or the incident? Okay, this is the context, the manner in which Lord G thought about the incident. So in this case, okay, 
the word very was missed out quite often by many people. So you cannot, some of you didn't write the word very, so you got it wrong. All right. So if you look carefully, all right, all these words in blue alone is wrong without the yellow. You must have both the yellow and the blue to get them up. Because one addresses much, the other addresses contemplation. You can start copying your area, the very book app. All right. Okay. You just put very, then put all the words in blue, Henry. You don't need to copy everything, just the keywords. All right. Now, so these are the very seriously or for a very long time. Okay. Very must be there. Okay. Thought long and hard. Long is contemplation, hard is much. All right. Or thought very hard, very seriously, very carefully, very cautiously, carefully about every detail of the incident or with careful deliberation. Any of these will give you the mark itself. Okay. So the degree is important. All right. That is what makes the answer specific and precise. All right. Okay. When you're done, okay. Once you are done copying, can you type six in the chat box? Then I will move on to the next page. Okay, I'm going to move on. Huh? Most of you are done already. Of the blue words carrier itself. I'm not going to go through all, huh? only some of them. All right, let's see. Okay, so you just look through it. Huh? Those uh, of you who got those things wrong. All right, of course, carefully alone is wrong because it should be very carefully because of much contemplation. This is definitely wrong. As I said before, please do not use the word how plus adjective. All right, because it does not tell me, okay, uh, how long and hard Lord Glenavon thought about it. Go to your insert, lines 10 to 12, okay, label Q12 part 1 CC and highlight only the words that are in blue, okay. These are the contextual clues that uh, tell you the answer is bustling with life. So, for example, businessmen were hurrying along the streets, okay. Gold buyers were busily bargaining for basement prices. Inhabitants were so absorbed in their own dealing. So, all these are the three clues that tell you it's bustling with life. Okay, businessmen hurrying along the streets, that means there's a lot of things being done. So, busting life. All right, go buyers busily bargaining for prices, uh, based on prices, that means it's a lot of life, a lot of negotiation, discussion going on. And inhabitants were so absorbed, that means they are so involved in their own dealings and negotiations. So, that's where the life comes in. All right, life can refer to noise. Uh, bustling with life, that means it's very noisy. A lot of activities going along. It's fine. 17 in your insert, can you highlight the ones in yellow? The amiable geographer lavished comprehensive information about Carrie's Brook to his mesmerized audience. So obviously the geographer gave a lot of information to satisfy the audience curiosity because the audience is mesmerized. That is why the people's curiosity should more or less be satisfied. All right, let's go to green. Okay, also, before we go to the green one, can you see this is a very popular wrong answer? Uh, that a lot, quite a number of you spelled curiosity wrong here. Okay, it's O S uh, in the middle, not O U S. Uh. A lot of people put the extra U, it is wrong uh, because spelling error. Wrong spelling equals zero mark. Uh. This is, I find that it's a pity, uh, honestly, because the answer is there and you're just copying the un correct answer into the box. All right, if you copy, a, I also can copy wrongly, right? Then I mean, you're just donating marks, you know, to Cambridge, the marker. All right, let's not be Santa Claus, all right, and start donating all marks away. Okay, so that's why you say you must check. Okay, and remember yes, uh, yesterday when I went through, right at the first page, I said you must strategically check your comprehensive answers. Check the easy questions first, like the literal code and this one, evaluative 
three question. Check not just whether the answer is correct, but check the spelling of the answer, the keywords. Okay, so that you can secure your marks for the uh, paper, the easy marks, easy to get marks first. Next one, calmness personified. All right, the green, can you highlight the words in green? Lines 24 to 27, labor 12, part 3 CC. All right, so this police inspector was very composed. That is very calm. All right, whatever he might have felt, he allowed no trace of anxiety to appear on his facial features. So he's not anxious at all. So he's very calm. That is calmness personified. And finally, unraveling the mystery is the last answer. Please make sure you do your corrections in green pen. All right. The conclusion was that the incident was a result of a crime. All right. So it's unraveling the mystery. Basically, unraveling means you solve the mystery. The mystery, you solve the mystery and you know it is a crime. What type of crime? Luggage van robbed and surviving passengers attacked by villains. So that is the exact nature of the crime. So you, they managed to solve the mystery of the crime. All right. Okay, I'm going to move on to editing uh, very soon. Okay, if you are done, can you type seven? And I'm going to move on to editing. Okay, let's move on to editing. Really. I'm going to close this and I'm going to move on to editing. All right. Okay, the rest of you, please take out your editing sheet of paper. Okay, if you can see the editing screen, please type one. Oh, no. Okay, please. Okay, very good. Let's start. Okay, for editing, right? Okay, see, these are some of the guidelines for the marking of the editing section. All right, if you give more than two takes, I think this class will have, all right, uh, we will deduct one mark from the overall mark. You are not supposed to be using pencil. You use pencil already, then you must erase and then use pen, all right? So continue using the technique that I taught you, but remember when you submit the paper, it must be done in pen, all right? Circling and the error, is, and the error itself. Of course, you must circle, not underline the error. So I've gone through this many, many times, okay? Answer is spelled wrongly, obviously it's zero. If you do not circle the wrong word, okay, it is zero also. Okay, so these are some things that you need to know. Our uh, handwriting must be legible. So we took a picture of some of the scripts. All right, this one looks like an I and looks like a T. So we don't know what is it. It is wrong. All right, remember if you cannot read your handwriting, it is wrong. Okay, so take note of this. Next reminder is you must attempt all questions and not leave any question blank. This may not have come for your class, honestly. Okay, it was from the whole level. So please make sure you attempt all questions and not leave any question blank because it will give you a fighting chance. If you do it, at least you have a chance that you will get it correct. Next one, there should only be two texts in the 10 lines of editing text, uh, please. All right, no three texts allowed. If there are three texts, you are minus one mark from the entire editing script. All right, next, capitalize the first letter of the word if this word starts a sentence. So there is one error, the S. S is the wrong answer, you circle the word S, and then when you do the, the corrections, right, the big I, you can see the S is capital letter A, all right? So that since it starts the sentence, your answer, which, which you think is if, also starts the sentence, you must put big I and a small F, very important, all right? If the big, okay, so basically the word that starts the sentence, the first letter must be capitalized in the editing text. So follow the form, uh, of the word in the text itself. All right. Okay. I'm going to show you the answers now because there's not enough time, right? I'll just show you the answers now. And can you go and do your questions now? This is the first five. Later, I'll show you the last five and then we'll be done for today. All right. I will, ex I will, in the extended curriculum itself, I will explain the editing answers, why it is, why the popular, uh, why the answers are correct. Okay. But can you copy, use a green pen, all right, circle the correct answer and write the correct answer on the right side. Okay, you look at these five first. When you are done, can you type two on the chat box there? I'll move to the next five. Okay, I'll explain why is it correct uh, during extended curriculum. Everybody, please type two while we are done with writing the questions in green pen. So I can move on to the next part, the, the last five.
Okay, yeah. Uh? I'm going to move on to the last five. Okay, yeah. Uh? Let's move on. Okay, this is the last five. This I uh, once again use green pen. Okay, circle the correct answer if you got it wrong, uh, and write the correct answer on the uh, write the correct answer on the, the, the side. So you circle the wrong error, you circle the error and write the answer at the side. Once you're done, you can type three. Okay, so uh, during extended curriculum itself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the reasons for each editing answer. Okay, I'm going to finish up editing, then I will go through the six stack of 12 pages of the essay feedback. And I'm also going to go through argumentative essay and descriptive expository essay. All right, the one that you I have not finished. So that is the, what I'm going to do for the four periods of extended curriculum. All right. Okay. Is everyone done? Okay, once you're done, that's all for today. All right, you can go for your next lesson. See you, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you during extended curriculum.